Good morning, Butterbine United Methodist Church. Welcome to Easter Sunday, virtually, for 2020. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering, like, that's not Pastor Donna. Well, that's very true. I'm her husband, Ken. But unfortunately, Pastor Donna earlier in the week was not feeling well and is only in the last day or so started to feel better. So the Lord placed it upon my heart to do the service, um, preach the message. So, so I just didn't want to miss an Easter. I didn't want the church to miss an Easter. So um, I believe the Lord placed the message on my heart. I pray that you'll accept it and that everything will go well this morning. Um, Pastor Donna is still here with us. She is running the, my phone, the video part of the phone. And when it comes to the singing part, Pastor Donna will be doing the singing. So, welcome. We're glad that you're here this morning. Um, as far as announcements, we really only have one announcement. And Donna, if you'll go to the next one. Prayer partners, hopefully this, during this time, you've been able to spend a good amount of time in prayer for your prayer partner, those that we selected during this time. But now Easter, uh, today is Easter Sunday, we know that people would like to know who's been praying for me. Uh, the person I have is my prayer partner. I um, sent a card earlier in the week, so hopefully she's received that. I'm sure people would like to know, so send a prayer partner, give them a call. But also beyond that, Pastor Donna said, wants us to remember and make frequent phone calls and send cards to each other during this time of social distancing. You know, we want this so time of social distancing to be safe. We all want to be safe. We don't want anyone of us to get sick. But it should not be a time of social isolation. We don't want anyone to feel like they're all by themselves and alone. That's one of the worst feelings you could have. So just a reminder, if you would, um, let your prayer partner know, hey, I was the one who's been praying for you. So I think that would be appreciated. Well, as we begin our service this morning, we're going to be showing a video. This was put out by uh, the uh, Discipleship Ministries. This is a virtual choir singing a wonderful, wonderful Easter song. Uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy it as much as we did.
We come down to a uh, time of prayer this morning. Now, at this point, we would normally be asking you to raise your hand and we'd be asking for your prayer request. We do encourage you this morning to continue to lift up the people that have been on our prayer list for a long time. Of course, we do need to remember all the people who are going through this uh, dreaded time. I discovered this past week that a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine from down south, when we were ministering down there, that he has COVID-19 and he's in the hospital. But I do want to praise God because I know that uh, he's doing better. His son posts regularly and his son has posted that uh, he's doing much better. So let's continue to remember each of these people in our prayers. And uh, so let's uh, just bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we look to you this morning, this glorious Easter morning. First of all, we want to thank you and praise you, O Lord, for your love and for what you did for us, Lord. For Lord, it was because of you, Lord, that we are can be saved. Because you went to that cross so many years ago but not only that you rose and we celebrate that this morning we celebrate Lord this newness of life and the newness Lord that you provide for each of us Father we lift up to you Lord those in our congregation Lord I pray for those in our congregation Lord who are in nursing homes or in the hospital, Lord, because right now they are totally isolated. They're, they can't have visitors. You know, they're not uh, able to even see family members. Lord, we just pray that you just uh, visit with them. Let them know your presence is with them, that they are never alone. Father, just lift up to you, Lord, those who uh, in our congregation, Lord, who maybe feeling sick today. Those who are under the weather, Lord, we just ask God for your healing touch upon them. Father, we pray for any in our congregation who may be grieving, Lord, maybe they've lost a loved one recently. We just pray that your spirit would just comfort them, be with them, encourage them, I pray. And Father, more than this, Lord, we not only pray for our congregation, we pray for this country and this world, Lord, as we endure this pandemic, Lord, this dreaded, dreaded pandemic that we're all going through. I know during this time, Lord, many are feeling scared. Many are feeling very um, just uncertain of what's going on. Lord, I know there are some, Lord, who aren't working but because of what's going on, Lord, their, their jobs have laid them off. And Lord, we just ask God that you just be with these persons, Lord. Comfort them and be with them, Lord, as they uh, plan how they can get their bills made. And just pray that you'll just help them to get their bills paid uh, as best as possible. We just pray for um, hearts of those who are collecting the bills, Lord, that they would just be uh, understanding if people are a little bit behind. Father, we pray for those, Lord, who are dealing with this virus. We just ask God that you would just uh, touch them. Be with them, Lord, work in their lives, O oh Father. We pray for those who've lost loved ones to this virus. Comfort them, Lord, be with them. Now, Father, as we 
continue our prayers this morning. We just want to join in praying, Lord, the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's our time of offering now. Unfortunately, I don't see anyone that can help pass the plates this morning, but uh, we do want to encourage people to continue to uh, make your offerings. There are ways you can do that. You can mail them here to the church at 804 South Lebanon Street here in Lebanon. You can mail them to Tom. I'm uh, sure if, you, if, you're, if you're on the email list, his email or his uh, physical address was on there. We've also started a online way of being able to pay your tithes through what's called Banco. Again, the instructions, the link to do that is in the, the email that Sherry sent. If you have any problems, I'm sure you can give Sherry a call. And, I'm sure she would be glad to help you through that. But we encourage you this uh, morning, please, please continue to support the church. You may not be here, but the church is still here. The church is not this building that we're looking at. The church is the people. And we are still ministering. We are still reaching out. We're doing all we can. And we still desperately need your support. So. We just ask that uh, you consider continuing to uh, do, do your time of, uh, of offering. This time, uh, Pastor Donna is going to come and she's going to lead us in the doxology. Savior name. 
The scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. And I'm going to be reading it from the New International Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still mar or dark, excuse me, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of cloth of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you now and I just ask God that uh, you just fill me with your anointing. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Let me share what you would have for the people today. Let me be led by your spirit and let it be something that touches the heart of those that are listening. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. As a child, Easter was one of my favorite days of the year. You might ask why? Well, it was simple. I was a kid. I would wake up on Easter Sunday morning and there would be a big Easter basket at my bed, at the uh, uh, bottom of my bed on my dresser. A big Easter basket. Now, my mom was not one to go out to the store and to buy one of those baskets that already had the stuff in there. No, my mom. She got the basket, she got the craft, 
She bought the candy, just what she knew I liked. And always, a big part of the centerpiece of that was a big chocolate Easter bunny. Now, why was that day so special besides the fact it was candy? It was special because it made me feel special. My mom had thought about me. She knew what kind of candies I like. She knew I loved those little robin eggs, those orange eggs. I just loved to just let those dissolve in my mouth. She knew I loved those, and so she made sure I had plenty of those. She made me feel special. Now, another person that I probably could talk about that probably felt like he was special was the Apostle Peter. And he was special, but maybe not for the reasons he initially thought. This morning, I want to look at what made him made this man Peter so special and how we can find that we are special just like him. And to start with, I, most people do know about Peter, but I just want to give you just a little bit about his background. Peter was from Bethsaida, which was a town in Galilee. He and his brother Andrew were in partnership as fishermen with James and John in a fishing village known as Capernaum. We do know that he was married. He was probably just an ordinary Joe, like most of us. But then he met Jesus. Now the Bible tells us there was a time that Jesus was in a place and he had a lot of people that were around him and they wanted to hear the word of God. And so what did Jesus do? He saw uh, Simon. By the way, Peter was not his initial name. His real name was Simon, son of John. But Jesus saw Simon's boat. And he comes up to Simon and says, can, can you let me borrow this? Can you push out just a little bit out of the shore so I can teach these people? And so Simon did that. He and his brothers, they were his brother and his partners, they were cleaning their net. But he did that. He did that. And we read that Jesus taught the people, but as soon as he finished, he turned to Simon and said, Simon, let's go out a little bit into the deep. Let's throw out your nets. Now Simon he said, Master, we were out all night. We didn't catch anything. But because if you said so, we'll do it. So he went out. He moved up into the deeper. He threw his nets. And what happens? The fish start coming and jumping into the nets. The nets are so full, he has to call his partners and say, come on, come here, please, come on, we need help. And he filled their boat. They filled the other boat. There were two boats. They were so filled that they started to sink. But Simon, when he saw all this, he looked at Jesus and he said, Lord, go away from me, Lord. I am a simple man. But Jesus looked at him. He said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. The Bible says that all four of them, they left everything and followed him. It wasn't soon after this that then Jesus gives Simon a new name. Jesus tells Simon, said, you are Simon, son of John. From now on, you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. Cephas is Aramaic. Peter is the Greek. And what these, both of these words mean, what both of these names mean is 
rock standing. Peter began to feel special. He had a new nickname that only the Lord began to talk to him about. Jesus, or Peter's feeling of being special continued on for the next three years of the ministry of Jesus. Oftentimes we see throughout the scriptures that Peter seems to be the main spokesman of the other disciples. When they want to ask something, they have Peter ask it. He is always listed as one of the three main disciples that Jesus takes with him. Peter, James, and John. It's these three that accompany Jesus onto the mountain for the transfiguration. Peter also had some special time on his own. So it was the time that the, the, the waves were rocky and Jesus comes and walks to them on the water. And they get afraid because first they think it's a ghost. But he said, it I, it's Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come out on the water. And Peter comes and he walks on the water with them. Jesus or Peter felt special. There's also the time when Peter answers Jesus' question. Jesus had asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And the disciples answered, well, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then Jesus asked them, but who do you say I am? It was Peter that said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. At this, Jesus turned to him and replied to him, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. I'm sure by now Peter is pretty, pretty special, pretty special. Then there was the last week of Jesus' life. There was a triumphal entry. Well, we'd have been here, what we didn't get to celebrate last week was what we call Palm Sunday, where Jesus comes into Jerusalem. And the people are lining it, and they're waving palm branches and singing, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Sure, Peter felt really special. He was in the in crowd. He was one of them. He was part of the entourage of Jesus, the king. <sighs> but sadly, things were about to change for Peter. During the Passover meal, Things begin to become a little bit serious when Jesus uh, started talking and he announced that one of them, one of his 12, would betray him. And they all said, is it me, is it me, is it me? But then he said, not only will one of you betray me, all of you will leave me. All of you will desert me. Now again, it's Peter that stands up and says, The Lord, the Lord, the all may leave you. I never will. And Jesus told him that before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. We read later during that same evening that they went out to pray and they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus tells his disciples, he takes again Peter, James, and John aside and he tells them, 
stay here and pray. And he goes out and he prays on his own. And when he comes back, what does he find? They're all sound asleep. He says, Peter, could you watch with me for one hour? Pray. And then it happens. The betrayer comes. Judas comes. And he gives Jesus a kiss. And that's when they know it's a man. Now Peter, what does he do? He impulsively grabs his sword and he chops off the ear of Malchus, the servant of the high priest. Fortunately, Jesus picks that ear up and he heals it and puts it back. He says, this is not my time. I'm not going to put away your sword. And it says, the Bible tells us that they all left him. We then read about that when Jesus goes uh, before the high priest, before the Sanhedrin, that Peter and John, they come to the area and they're kind of warming. And what does Peter do? He denies Jesus. Not once. Not twice. But three times. The Bible tells us that Jesus looks at him. So Peter must have been close enough that he could see. But Peter looks at him and he sees Jesus looking at him. And it says he ran out of there weeping bitterly. And it just got bad to worse. Now we don't know what happened to Peter during the rest of the time of the crucifixion. We don't know if he went to the cross. The only one we know that went to the cross was John. And I'm sure that Peter, wherever he was, he was in despair. Was I right? Was he the Messiah? Was he the Son of the living God? He might have been doubting. Sure, he felt guilty because he loved Jesus. But then it comes to the point of our scripture this morning where the women went to the tomb on Easter morning, what we call Easter morning, that first day of the week. And they find that he's not there. And he goes and they can tell the disciple. And as the scripture said this morning, John and Peter, they run to the tomb. And even though John gets there first, Peter's the one that goes in there. Where are you, Jesus? Where are you? And all he sees are the limbs. It wasn't until later that evening that Jesus appears to them. And finally they understand that Jesus had risen from the dead for them. And it was just a little bit later on that we read about, again, just one more story with Peter where he decided to go back fishing. And it says that while they were fishing, he and some of the disciples, that they again got a boatload of fish. And then they saw someone on the beach and they looked and John said, I think that's Jesus. What did Peter do? He jumped off the boat and swam back to them. And while they're eating, Peter and Jesus have this conversation. Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. And I think it's interesting as we look at this that we see that Peter was asked this three times. Just like he denied him three times. Jesus is restoring him. Peter began to feel special again. 
Do you feel special? Who have you disappointed? Where have you failed? Do you believe that someone thinks that you're special? Do you think you're special because of what you've done in life? Are we special? Are we special in God's eye like Peter was? Sometimes we may look around and feel like we're not so special. But we are. We're so special. Why is there so much disease and death happening? Oftentimes, we don't feel special because we're scared. I think our situation, you look at what's been going on the last few months, who would have thought back in January and February when things were seeming to go just like normal. Here we would be on Easter Sunday, and I would be preaching to a telephone, a smartphone, instead of a congregation. This coronavirus, this COVID-19, People are scared because of what's going on. I believe they can be rightly so. This morning I saw that there are over half a million cases of people with COVID-19. Over a half million just in the United States. And also here in the United States in just a small amount of time, a few weeks that it's been on, there have been over 20,000 deaths. That's scary. We experienced that personally within the last week. Last Friday night, a week ago Friday, Donna started feeling kind of sick. She had a sore throat. She was feeling very fatigued. She had a temperature. She just did not feel well. It's because of that, that that she canceled services last Sunday because she just did not feel like being able to do anything. On Monday, she called her doctor, and the doctor said, well, with, because of your symptom, and because of the medication that you're on, I think you qualify to be tested in. Monday was the first day they allowed for these people to be tested through IU Health. So Tuesday morning, we went and she was tested. I'm happy to say Wednesday morning, we got the news, her results were negative. She did not have the COVID-19. But we were scared. We were scared about what if. We read and hear about all these people who seemingly have been in good health. But suddenly they're gone very quickly. Are we special when members our family are dying. But you see, what made Peter special wasn't because Jesus gave him a new name. It wasn't because of the things he did or what he did or things that all that we read about in the book of Acts that he did after this. What made Peter special was because God loved him. And that Jesus loved him so much that he went to the cross for Peter. And no matter 
we can understand this resurrection day, we are special. We are special because God loves us. We are special because Jesus died on the cross for us. You see, at some point, we all are going to experience death. We are all going to reach that time. But in Jesus' resurrection, there is hope that our lives mean something. That our lives are just not these years that we have here. There's an eternity beyond this. And that makes us special that we can see that we are in Christ. Yes, we will die. But as Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection, so will we live again. This morning, I hope that the hope of the resurrection fills you with hope, strengthens you to know that no matter what happens in this unusual time, that we will be together. Whether we're in this congregation, in this sanctuary again, or whether we're going to be meeting together in eternity. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning for all that you're doing and all that you've done in our lives. We thank you that you went to the cross. It saddened us that you had to suffer, but it encourages us that you did it willingly. And you do it again for each one of us. Lord, as we look at this message of Easter, Lord, help us to know that we don't need to be scared about what's going on, that you are with us. Thank you, dear Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, in a minute, Donna will be... Um, coming to uh, sing a final verse, and uh, she will be closing us in a benediction. Donna just gave us a view of the back of the sanctuary. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, we will uh, sing God Be With You till we meet again. Uh, but anyway, we do want to thank you and uh, Hopefully, next Sunday, Donna, Pastor Donna will be back and sharing the word. Um, she's planning on hopefully in the next few days, now that she's feeling better, to possibly uh, deliver a few more of the directories. She's got some other things she was, she's talked about wanting to do. But we do appreciate you. We miss you so much. On behalf of Donna and I, we, we want to let you know we love you. We reach out and give you a virtual hug because we can't do it live. And we anxiously await that time when we can be together again. If we can all meet together in this sanctuary. God bless you. Thanks for Donna. Well, the uh, door in the back of the sanctuary is where the light would go out into the world since it has been here uh, with us. Uh, the light has been here with us. And I will uh, go right quick and put out these candles. And then we shall sing God be with you.
And now we're going to sing uh, God Be With You Too. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, God uphold you. With his peace, securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. And please go. Please go out into your world, out into your world in virtual ways. <laughs> out that door in virtual ways and uh, and go in peace and love knowing that you are loved by God, that you are special and that even though this life is short and death comes to us all, uh, we will live again and always. Go in peace and hope.